My brothers, you find that when we do jawla and we mix with the boys and we go around and we talk and even amongst us, yani if we were to be honest, you find that a lot of the times we tend to say that, you know, things get a bit boring, eh? But yeah, you know, every now and then you think, brother, can't you spice it up a bit, man? You know, here in this particular masjid, we tend to have a saying, we say a flame. Brother, rip a film, rip a movie, make it fun, make it entertaining. And even now you find that it's reached such a level that even when we listen to a reminder or we put a CD on, if it doesn't have that, ah, 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 ah in the background, right? You can't listen to it anymore. It just doesn't have the same kick. Right? So you find that sure we're becoming this entertain me, brother. Wow me. Rip a movie. Put, you know, dramatic background noise and, 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 and try to captivate me as much as you can. But you find, my brothers, that the reality is is that the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's complete, it's finished. The book, the Quran, there's no new verses coming. There's not going to be a, a, a new edition. There's no Old Testament and New Testament. It's the Quran. It's perfect. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, today we have completed your religion. That every single situation, whatever problem you have, whatever difficulty that will come into your life, anything you need, you look to the deen of Allah and you will find your answers there. So the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, it's complete. Not a letter more and not a letter less. <coughs> Everything that we need for salvation, everything that we need to pull up, everything that we need for change, my brothers, it's there, it's in the book of Allah. And the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa are also true. There's no new hadith coming. You know, there's, there's, <laughs> there's not going to be a new shootout in the area and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is going to give a hadith based on what happened. That hadith are known. So my brothers, what I'm trying to get at is that this deen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he would repeat himself again and again. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he spoke, he didn't rip these, you know, these epic movies. His words were short, his message was clear, and he was firm. And he would drill this into the believers day after day, day after day, week after week. And to the reality of those words, they entered the heart of the believers. My brothers, you find that every single believer who's practicing, who has established those five prayers in his life, you find that Allah Azza wa Jal, He's made it obligatory. According to most madhahib, that the salah is incomplete if Surah Al-Fatiha is not recited. But why? Why isn't it Fatiha today, Ikhlas tomorrow, another verse, another chapter? No. Allah Azza wa Jal, Surah Al-Fatiha, every single day. If you are those who have established your prayers, then the five prayers making a minimum every single day, every single one of us is reciting Surah Al-Fatiha 17 times a day. If we're going to speak about being repetitive, if we're going to speak about, you know, getting bored and speaking about boring, this has got to be the peak. Bro, I'm reading this chapter 17 times a day minimum. That's without your sunan prayers. But have you ever really looked into Surah Al-Fatiha? I ask honestly, how many of us really know the meaning of Surah Al-Fatiha? You read this chapter 17 times a day, but do you honestly know what you're saying? Do we know who we're standing before? Do we know who we're standing in front of? These words that I'm saying, Ya Allah, why did you choose this particular chapter and why did you make it 17 times a day? My brothers, if you understood the Fatiha, 
and you reflected on the Fatiha, your prayers will be on different levels. And you and I will be on different levels. We start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Of all the names of Allah, of all the attributes, Allah Azza wa Jal chose these two in specific. To start not only Surah Al-Fatiha, but every single chapter in the Quran except for Surah Al-Tawbah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, my brother, in the name of Allah. When you're standing there before Allah Azza wa Jal and you're saying Bismillah, you're saying in the name of Allah, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, what does this mean then? And what should I be thinking about? What should be going in my heart when I say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? The Rahmah of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal, He chose that He wants you to start with Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He wants you to recognize before anything else, but it's the first chapter. It's the first chapter in the Quran. They say that the book of Allah is a book of violence. It's a book of terrorism. It's a book of corruption, injustice, oppression. Yet the first verse is Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. How much mercy does Allah have, my brother? You know, they say that the strongest bond in the world, the strongest bond is the bond between mother and baby. And not just any bond, but a mother that's breastfeeding. So the connection between a breastfed baby and that mother is the closest bond in the world. There's nothing stronger. In fact, in a study that was done recently, they say that two kids can be from the same mother. Two children can be from the same mother. If one of them was breastfed and the other was bottle fed, the one that is breastfed will have a stronger connection to his mother throughout his life. Your mother, my brother, who loves you more than anything in this world. Your mother, my brother, who, who the nights Sleepless nights. Your mother had sleepless nights, my brother. In breastfeeding you at 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. When you would get sick, she would wake up frantically. And wake up your father. And tell him the boy is sick. The girl is sick. Let's go to the doctors. You know, i got three kids and my wife, whenever they're, they're sick. She wakes me up in the middle of the night. She says to me, come on, let's go to the doctor. I'm like, ayah doctor, man, are you serious? It's three in the morning. Make dua. Muhammad, please, let's go to the doctor. And I'm in the deep depth of sleep. But look at where her heart is. My brother, your mother who loves you more than anything in this world. Your mother who, when you came into this world, your father, her husband, who was... You know, when a woman first gets married, her husband is, he's, you know, he's a Habib. My husband, I love him. Up until the first kid comes into her life, the hero becomes a zero. <laughs> Any father, he knows. The moment that kid came into this world, you're nothing. Everything comes before you. Everything comes before you. SubhanAllah, I was hearing today, Sulaiman Mullah, he was saying one of the talks, Saying about women, you know, subhanAllah, ajib. He says, you know, there's only two places that a woman will ever praise her husband. Those single boys, this is the truth, huh? Ask any married man here, and they'll tell you. There's only two places where a woman praises her husband. The first time she praises him is before they get married. You know when they're engaged? 
She tells all her friends, oh, do you know who I'm engaged to? You know, the guy that drives the car. Oh my God, yeah, we're getting married. <laughs> we're getting married. <laughs> we heard he's not religious. Oh, he's not no, he reads Quran every day. He sends me nice text messages of his favorite surah in the Quran and verses that move his heart. He's so pious. Until you get married, bro. <laughs> and then you're the nishah that doesn't take her out anymore. And then the next time she praises you, my brother, is when your family is following your funeral. She says to her son, Wallah, your dad he used to be a good man. Wallah, Wallah, he was a good bloke. They're the only two times that a woman will ever praise her husband. <laughs> when they're following the funeral, she says to her son, your, your dad, he was a good man. He says, what's the world come to? A brother's got to die to be praised by his wife. So your mother who loved you more than anything in this world, my brother, if you push the right buttons with your mother, she'll disown you, man. She'll disown you. Your father who took honor and pride and said, MashaAllah, this is my son. Who used to hold you on his arms and hold you on his shoulder and wanted the world to see my son. You push the right buttons with your old man and he'll disown you, bro. How many brothers, how many brothers do we know that have been kicked out of the house? Your best friend, my brother, your best friend, your best friend. The guy you grew up with when you were young, my Koi, my Bava, my Khai, my Selly brother. We spent time in jail with this guy. He was my Selly brother. Me and him, we're like that. We're like that, bro. Yet you push the right buttons with him, my brother, and he'll disown you. You work for your boss for 20, 30 years, but even your boss has a procedure at work. He says, if you break this procedure, you're gone, you're finished. But Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who says, do whatever you want, my slave. If you come to me with repentance, I will forgive you. He says, my slave, if you come to me and your sins have reached the heavens, but you don't associate partners with me, I will come to you with mercy that matches it. He says, do whatever you want. As long as you don't associate partners with me, I will always forgive. He says, Ya Ibadi, Allah is calling out. He says, Oh my slaves, those who have transgressed against themselves. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Never, ever, ever give up hope in the mercy of your Rabb. This is Allah. This is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. This is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He says, Do whatever you want. You don't associate partners with me, I will always forgive. He says, let your sins reach the heavens, but you don't associate partners with me. And you make tawbah. He says, I'll come to you with mercy that matches it. This is Allah. He says, oh my slaves, do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who between wudu and wudu, He forgives your sins. Between Salah and Salah, He forgives your sins. Between Jum'ah and Jum'ah, He forgives your sins. Between Ramadan and Ramadan, He forgives your sins. Between Hajj and Hajj, never mind forgives your sins. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He says, you go back to the day your mother gave birth to you. In fact, it's better than that because when you were born, you didn't have any good deeds. Allah will wipe away your deeds. Allah will wipe away your sins and keep your deeds. He says, oh my slave, if you come to me a hand span, I come to you an arm's length. He says, if you come to me walking, I come to you running. He says, oh my slave, when you remember me, I remember you. When you forget me, I still remember you. This is a Rahman a Rahim. So we say, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Praising anything other than Allah, you're wasting your time, brother. 
He says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. The Lord of the worlds. You know, sometimes, you know, subhanAllah, you live in Auburn or you live in Lakemba, and you tend to think it's the only place in the world, eh? <laughs> sometimes you forget. Just how big Australia is. And then every now and then you're shown this epic video or you're shown something that exposes you to the beautiful countries that surround us. And you think, Allahu Akbar, how big is this earth? How big is this world? But Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. What is he referring to? It is said, that the sun, the sun, which is the smallest star, the sun, which is the smallest star in our galaxy, it's the smallest one in our galaxy. And our galaxy is one of billions. Did you hear that? One of billions. This sun that is millions of times bigger than the earth. And it's the smallest star. They say if one second, one second was given to name every single star that's in our galaxy, not the other ones, just in our galaxy. It is said you will need 600 trillion years and you still wouldn't name them all. And that's in our galaxy. And our galaxy is one of millions and millions that's out there. And all of this is in the first heavens. All of this is in the first heavens. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, We've heard this many times, my brothers, but where is the heart? Where is the heart when you stand before your Allah and you say, Alhamdulillah, that all praise is due to Allah. Rabbil, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says the distance between the first heaven and the second is like a ring in a desert. A ring in a desert. You know what he's saying? Yeah, and it's not existent anymore. Can you even see a ring in a desert? If we were to take an eye picture, right, a bird's eye view of the desert, could you even see the ring? Could you possibly even see the ring? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says the distance between the first heaven and the second is a distance of 500 years. He says the second to the third is a distance of 500 years. He says the third to the fourth is a distance of 500 years. He says the fourth to the fifth is a distance of 500 years. He says the fifth to the sixth is a distance of 500 years. He says the sixth to the seventh is a distance of 500 years. He says the sixth to the seventh is a distance of 500 years. Then the seventh above that is an ocean. Above the seventh heaven is an ocean. The distance of which is a distance of 500 years. And then the throne of Allah. He says, all the seven heavens to the throne of Allah is like a ring in a desert. He says, and then the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith, he's sitting with the Sahaba. He says to them, you know, I hear what you don't hear and I see what you don't see. He says, verily the heavens have squeaked. He says, he says, Attat is sama wa hukkalaha an ta'it. He says, verily the heavens, my brothers, they've squeaked and they have every single right to squeak. He says, for there isn't a space for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that on top of the Kaaba is a house there is a house that is on top of the Kaaba that is in the heavens. He says every single day, 70,000 angels go in, make tawaf, and they never come back. Every single day, there's a new batch and a fresh load of 70,000 angels, and they never come back. Allah, who is Rabbil Alameen, He's Lord of the worlds. Where are we, men? Where are we? Where are we? And brothers walk around on the streets with a big chip on his shoulder and who is shagli? 
that I'm something, brother. He has a tat on his neck, now I have to respect him. He's been in the gym for a couple of weeks, huh? heading up a couple of cycles of juice. His t-shirt, he's wearing his son's t-shirt, right? But because his chest and because his shoulders are coming out of the shirt, I've got to respect him, bro. He's something. He's something, you know, because his forearms are a little bit bigger than yours. Or maybe because his car is worth sixty, seventy thousand dollars dollars So I'm kicking back, brother. What you looking at, bro? Le, who are you, man? Le, what are you, bro? Where, le, honestly, where were you 100 years ago? You're nothing. Allah says you weren't even in existence, bro. You didn't even exist. You didn't even exist. And you're walking around like you're something. Bro, your beginning was a nutva. You were a piece of sperm. If you were on the floor, brother, I wouldn't have picked you up if you paid me. And we think we're something. There was a pious man who was sitting. SubhanAllah, you know, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he says it's amazing. That how can the one who passed through the passage of urine twice have pride in his heart, man? <laughs> you forget where you came from, bro? <laughs> Do you forget? There was a pious man who was sitting. And, you know, everyone's coming in and respecting him, mashallah. And so this very simple, ordinary man walks by and doesn't acknowledge his existence altogether. So this guy, you know, he was, he was, he was cut a bit. You know, he's pious, but everyone else is giving me status. And this guy who's a nobody, it's not like he's something. He's a nobody, walks by and doesn't even acknowledge my existence. So he gets up and goes over to the man. He says to him, do you know who I am? He says, yes, I know exactly who you are. He says, in fact, he says, I know you better than you know yourself. So the man buckles. He says, what do you mean you know me better than I know you? He says, your beginning was a piece of sperm and your end is a dead carcass. And in between, you're a vessel that carries around urine and feces. What are you? What are you? Compared to Rabbil Alameen. So we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And then Allah wants to remind you again. You know, sometimes you hear the talk, yeah, how many times we had to hear this talk? You know, like of Shaykh Amar, dunya, 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 salah in the majid, salah in the majid, sarana, bra. But the reminder, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the reminder benefits the believer. Not education, I'm not educating you, I'm not telling you something that you don't know. I'm reminding you of what you already know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to remind you again, just in case, just in case, God forbid, that within the first two verses of your Fatiha, you forgot who Allah azza wa jal is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you again, He says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And here comes my favorite one. He says, Malik yawm al-Din. He says, Malik, Malik yawm al-Din. My brothers, he says that he is the king of that day. The day of judgment. The king. The king of the day when the world will be running around frantically. He's the king of the day when even the prophets and the messengers and the shuhada will be scared. He's the king. He's the master of that day, my brothers, when every single living thing will come to an end. When Allah Azza wa Jal, He calls for the day, and every single human being on the face of the planet will come to an end, and every single jinn will come to an end, 
and every single animal will come to an end and every bird in the sky will fall to the ground. The day when everything will be destroyed. The day when even the angels will come to an end. Picture this day, my brother. Picture this day that we, we live every single day and, and yalla, no fear. No fear of this day. You know, Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, he comes down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says to him, Ya Muhammad, Aish ma shi'at, fa inna ka mayit. You know, I always think and I ponder about this. Jibreel, the chosen one of the angels, he's having a conversation with the chosen one of the prophets. And he's talking to him, you know. He says to him, Ya Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says to him, Ish ma shi'at. O Prophet of Allah, live for as long as you want. For verily you are dead, there will come a day when you have to die. He says to him, a prophet of Allah, love whoever you want. Love, go, fall in love, cling on to this person and hang on to this person. He says, for verily there will come a day when the both of you will have to part. He says to him, a prophet of Allah, do as you please. And this is us, my brothers. We're doing as we please. We're living in this dunya. We're running amok. We're running amok. Only God can judge me, brother. Saying, brother, he had a tat. Only God can judge me. Did you work that out yourself or did someone give you a hand, bro? He says, only God can judge me. Well, you're right, brother. God is going to judge. Jibreel is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to him, do as you please, go, do as you please. For there is coming a day where for every single action, you will be held responsible and accountable. The day, my brother, when every single thing will come to an end and everything will be destroyed. Every government will collapse, every ruler will fall, every nation will fall, every human being will fall, every animal will fall. Even the angels will fall. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will call. Allah Azza wa Jal will call out. Aina al Jababira. Where are those tyrants? Where are those tyrants? Where are the sons of those tyrants? He says, Aina al-Muluk. Aina abna al-Muluk. He says, Where are those kings? Where are the sons of those kings? He says, Aina al-Ladina. Where are those that lived in my bounties? They lived in those that I gave. I gave them. I gave them. And they worshipped other than me. Where are they? Where are they? He says, Who is the king of this day? He says, who is the king of this day? Allah Azza wa Jal is the king of that day, my brother. So when we say Maliki Yawm al-Din, understand what you're saying, my brother. Allah Azza wa Jal is the king. Allah is the king of all kings. He says, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. SubhanAllah, I was sitting with Shaykh Omar after Asr. I said to him, Shaykh, what do you think of this? 
He said to me, you know, usually the object is towards the end. Allah is saying, me, you. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Iyaka na'budu, that it is Allah. Iyaka, you, Allah first. It is Allah that we worship. He says, you know, usually you mention the object towards the end, right? So you say, I walk to the car. You don't say car, I walk to, right? You say, I walk to the car. But here Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, it is me that you worship. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ya Allah, it is you that we worship and you alone do we worship. It is Allah that we worship, my brothers. Allah and Allah alone. You know, it is said that which you worship, it makes you its slave. And that's why a believer who truly worships Allah, what's his name? He's a slave of Allah. But my brothers, how many of us are truly slaves of Allah? I was saying to a brother, that which you worship. I think the brother was in ESO in school, I don't know, Allahu Alam. He said to me, bro, what do you mean? Don't we all worship Allah? I said to him, brother, we all say we worship Allah. But look at yourself and look at who you're enslaved to. That is who you truly worship. Have you ever heard the term, he's a slave to the dollar? Have you ever heard? He's a slave to the dollar, why? Because it's enslaved him, khalas. It owns him, bro. It owns him. It owns his every minute of the day. It owns his every decision. It owns him. How many brothers have gotten married? They got married. And his wife owned him. He became a slave to his wife. He became a slave to his wife. <laughs> we went Khuruj for two days. Two days. And there was brothers who couldn't get off the phone. He was SMSing his wife at night. He said, brother, she gets upset. Bro, are you serious? Have we honestly reached this level? You can't leave your wife for two days. For two days. Brother, we were, we were in Saudi. We went to Hajj. We went to Hajj. And by Allah, Wallah al -Azim, you know what the biggest concern in Hajj was? Never mind is Allah accepting my Hajj. Brother, tell me what I have to do on Arafat. Brother, where can I get Wi-Fi? They're walking around like zombies. Brother, where can I get Wi-Fi? In Saudi, in Hajj, in a trip that's supposed to be once in a lifetime. Brother, I haven't spoken to the wife in two days. Wallah, she's going to kill me. <laughs> that which you worship, it makes you its slave, man. He says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, it is you that we seek assistance in you. In you, we seek assistance in you and nothing and nobody else. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to Lira Abdullah, is the time for Aisha, huh? Yeah? No, no, no. I've still got time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Little Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is he's sitting, he's sitting behind him. So he turns to him. He says to him, Oh my son, let me teach you words. Young boy. He says, Oh my son, let me teach you words. Sometimes, you know, when a brother gets onto Deen, so relax, bro. Relax, huh? Shrey, shrey. Let's not go too hard on the guy. You gotta go easy. 
Look at the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's speaking to a young boy. He says, my son, إِذَا سَأَلْتْ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ He says, if you ask, ask Allah. He says, and if you ever seek assistance, then make sure that you only seek assistance with Allah Azza wa Jal. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ My brothers, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Ya Allah, it is you and you alone that we worship, man. You, Ya Allah, you. Ya Allah, my heart, it cries for you. My heart joys for you. My heart buckles for you. My heart cries for you. You and you alone. Ya Allah, this whole world, if this whole world was to come together to harm me, they couldn't, Ya Allah, unless you give them permission. Ya Allah, and if this whole world wanted to come to benefit me, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, they couldn't benefit me, Ya Allah, unless you allow them to, Ya Allah. And then he says, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Ihdina, Ihdina. You know, it is said that Surah Al Fatiha is a dua. Really, the whole thing is a dua. And it is said that it is the best dua you can ever make. When we were on Arafat, you know, it's a very special day. Arafat is a beautiful day. And all the brothers, you know, after getting off the Wi-Fi, they, re really, they really want to make dua. But a lot of us, myself included, yani, we don't know Arabic and we're not very poetic. So we can't rip one of those, you know, those beautiful du'as where everything rhymes and everything. So brothers run around frantically. What do I say? What do I say? How do I say it? What do I say? How do I say it? What Brother, if all you made, if the only du'a you made was Surah Al-Fatiha, by Allah, it's enough. So he says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ Ya Allah, it is you and you alone that we worship. Right? He says, he say, uh, sorry, he says, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide. Who? Who? Uh, he says, guide us to that straight path. Not guide me and my sheikh. Not guide me and my wife. Not guide me and my kids. Not just me and my jama'ah. Not me and my madhab. Ihdina. Ya Allah, guide the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do we not, really do we not reflect? This is a ummah. We are not individuals. We are not individuals. We are an ummah. We are one. We are the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not the followers of a masjid. We are not the followers of a sheikh. We are not the followers of a madhab. We are the followers of Muhammad. We are the followers of Allah. Where has this quality gone? Where? Where has this quality, where has the fikr and the concern for the ummah of Muhammad, where has it gone? Today I'm so wrapped up with my sheikh, I think he's the only one in the world. Me and my jama'ah brother, we're on the haq. Only we understand deen. Me and my mother, brother. What is happening, man? Where is this love for the Ummah? Where? You know, people talk about unity. We talk about unity. You know, we say, Ihdinas. What is unity? What? My brother, let me tell you something honestly and please give me your heart. 
If you think that unity is all praying in the one masjid, following the one madhab, praying behind the one sheikh, all of us holding hands at the end singing Kumbaya, you got a whole thing coming. Unity in the Ummah is when I love my brother regardless. Regardless what Sheikh he follows, regardless what Madhab he follows, regardless whether he follows mood sighting or calculations, I couldn't care less. I love him because of the kalima of La ilaha illallah in his heart. And that bond has made us brothers for life. And I cry for him. I bleed for him. I pray for him. Allah guide us man, guide us, guide the Ummah of Muhammad, bring us back. Bring us back. Today we're so caught up with our differences. Brother, have you, got the, have you forgotten the one million things we have in common? Have you honestly forgotten? We're so caught up in these trivial things. You know, Abu Bakr and Umar the best friends of Rasulullah, the best, number two in Islam, right? They differed on almost every single, on every matter, they almost had a difference of opinion. And we're not talking, you know, should we paint the masjid red or white? We're not talking, you know, look, what's your opinion? We're talking chalk and cheese. After the battle of Badr, there was captives of war. So Rasulullah he didn't know what to do with them. So he called his Sahaba. He says, what do we do? So everyone gave his opinion. So he comes to his beloved Abu Bakr. He says to Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, what do you think we should do with the captives of war? He says to the Prophet of Allah, here's what I think we should do. Islam is new, Islam is weak, Islam is fresh. And these people, we know them, their family. How about we ransom them, we sell them back to the people of uh, Mecca, we sell them back and use that money to strengthen Islam and strengthen the army. Nice opinion. True? So he looks over to Umar radiallahu anhu. He says, oh, Umar, what do you think? He says, a prophet of Allah, Give the cousin of Ali to Ali and give the cousin of Umar to Umar and let Ali and Umar slaughter his own cousin with his own hands. And let it be known to the world and let it be known to the people of Mecca and let it be known to Allah that nothing will ever stand between us and Allah. These are, these are opinions. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went with the opinion of Abu Bakr. The next day, Umar radiallahu he's coming to see his Habib. He finds Abu Bakr and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying. So he says to them, what's happening? Why are you crying? Tell me so I can cry. Rasulullah says to Umar radiallahu he says, we were wrong. And Allah agreed with your opinion. Allah, not, not, he says, Allah brought down Quran to agree with you, ya Umar. What did he do? I told you, brother, we're on the haq Is that what he did? He started crying. He started to cry. My brothers, we are billions, man. We are what, what, 1.6, 1.7 billion. We've all got an opinion, man. We all have an opinion. But we are one ummah who follow one prophet, who have one Qibla, who read one Quran. Who worship one Allah. La ilaha illallah. He says, Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Ya Allah, guide us. Guide us onto the straight path, Ya Allah, guide us. And then he says, As sirat al ladina, 
an'amta alayhim. He says, as-sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim. Ya Allah, we're asking you to guide us onto that straight path, Ya Allah. Which path? Ya Allah, the path that you chose for those whom you loved. The path that you chose for those who you cherished. Alladheena an'amta alayhim, those who you bestowed your mercy and your bounties upon. Ya Allah, that's the path we ask for. That's the path that we ask for, my brothers. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. As sirat al ladina an amta alayhim. Ghayri al maghdubi alayhim. Ghayri al maghdubi alayhim. Oh Allah, give us the straight path and not the path. Ya Allah, don't give me the path. Ghayri al maghdubi alayhim. The one who your curse and your anger came down upon them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we don't want that path, Ya Allah. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا الله دان جيف اس ذا باث اوف ذوز هو يو وينت هو يو سنت اس ذوز هو وينت استراي يا الله ذوز هو وينت استراي يا الله ذيس از ذا فاتحة ماي براذرز اند وي ساي امين تو ذيس وي ساي امين so my brother, you know, we say, you know, give us a reminder. What better reminder do we have than the book of Allah Azza wa Jal? You know, for us, because we're so far, we go to Mashaykh and we go to these inspirational speakers and we get a lecture and we put that in the background. Why? So that my heart can be moved. But those before us, they used to open the book of Allah and they used to cry the nights, man. You want a pump talk, my brother? Read the book of Allah. You want an emotional talk, my brother? Then read the book of Allah. You want guidance in your life, my brother? Then read the book of Allah. You want happiness, my brother? Then read the book of Allah. You want strength? You want to be empowered? Then read the book of Allah. So my brothers, don't say I'm bored. Don't say give me something new. Rather ask Allah to soften these hearts. Ask Allah to bring the understanding of not only Surah Al-Fatiha, but the whole Quran into our hearts. Are we all ready to do this inshallah? inshallah. inshallah.